This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. The casing is fragile. The slightest touch could cause it to crumble. Its casing crumbles beneath your hands, sloshing volatile brine as it collapses. to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flares who abducted you. The enemy! So many enemies! This is your end! Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh! My head! What is this? Squaw! You are no thrall. Blackith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. We carry Mind Flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be Geich, Mind Flayers. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. Who am I? Your only chance of survival. And you mine, though it pains me to say it. It is where we might gain control of the Ga'arth, the ship. Once in command, we will deal with our Gaith captors. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane.
We have no time for stragglers. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? Warding runes. The pod wide open unless they're destroyed. Are you satisfied? We need to go. Wait! That can't be. There has to be another way. Please! It cannot be helped. Come. A dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. inside do as I say of the transponder. We must escape now! Do it. We will deal with the Geich after we escape. Get out of here, now!
blasted door right. What? Stop! Not another stepper out. Wait. It's you. You're the one who tried to free me on the ship. At least you made the effort. Suddenly, you see what she sees, feel what she feels. Confusion, resolve, and a hint of gratitude. Ah! Did you feel that? You've got the same thing I do, in your head. The same. It must be that tadpole they put in our eyes. I assume that's what caused our minds to... cross. These things are going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind this door. But I've barely made a dent in it so far. I can handle myself, but you're right. Time to try something else. I'm going to see what's at the top of this cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these creatures along the way. Or just company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. After everything you've been through, my name gives you pause. Please. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. That is none of your business. I suggest we concentrate on surviving. Lead the way. Hurry. I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? There. Can you see it? Just a dumb boar. You're relieved. Until you see the flash of a dagger. I just need information. I saw you scuttling about on the ship. You're in league with them, aren't you? Those tentacle... Ah! Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <sighs> what was that? What's going on? It's those tentacled monsters. Whatever they did to us caused that link. They took you too. I saw it during... whatever just happened. And to think... I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. Aha. A kindred spirit. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. My, my. You've been busy. So, did you learn anything about these worms while wandering the ship? Turn us into... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> of course it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? 
Although, it hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. You know, I was ready to go this alone, but maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And anyone that can crash a mind flare ship and walk away seems like a good person to know. All right, I accept. Lead on. Come on, Dick! Faster! Get her out of there! Don't die! Don't die! Don't die! Help! Yes! It's my daughter! You... You did this! You want to kill her! something convulses inside you. Your vision lurches sickeningly. You are one with your assailants, your minds fused together. They are frightened, lost. The creature in the wreckage is forcing them to attack you, controlling them like puppets. Its voice shivers across your brain, seeking access, trying to bend your will to its bidding. feel a shock of agony as the mind flare cuts through your defenses, piercing your mind. Your vision swims, but you fight through the pain. Your assailants are still under the creature's thrall. That thing, it was speaking in my head. Oh, Umberly spare us no. My friend, what happened to him? What's going on? I, I understand. Just please know that we meant no harm. We saw the crash and came to help. That thing got a hold of us. We, we were ready to die for it. Came ashore so fast, we crashed the boat. I... I don't know what we'll do now. You were... You were on that thing. Heading where? This is the middle of nowhere. Wait. Your... Your mind. I can still feel it like an echo. You... You're like that thing. Please, we're grateful for your help, truly. But we don't want any more trouble. We'll go, all right? We'll go. Oh. You're alive. That's unexpected. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood. An intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gale. Well met. Very same. A traumatizing experience, if an instructive one. Yes. The ocular penetration by an illithid tab pole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not to mention, you're staring at me like a rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? 
Hmm, pity. But that'll have to wait. The primary need now is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? A process known as seromorphosis? It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer, either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Just trying to figure out where we stand. Conclusion? Nowhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes, deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! By the nine hells! Open the gates! here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too? Unbelievable! Tell that to the dead at the gate. Shut it, horns! I'd be lying dead next to the goblins if you'd stalled any longer. My duty is to this camp. Oh, God forbid you risk your precious tale. But I shouldn't be surprised. Foulbloods ain't known for courage. And who the hell are you again? Enough. Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. Forgive that display. Aradin's a blowhard, but that's no cause for me to join him. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. 
Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve. There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. Goblin got you. The druid Halsin's a renowned healer, but he didn't make it back from Aradin's expedition. If it's not too serious, you could try his apprentice, Nettie. She's with the other druids in the inner grove. They've withdrawn there to prepare this damn ritual of theirs. Really? We're messengers now. We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. Let's check for Healer, then move on. Whatever else is happening here isn't our concern. We won't help anyone if we turn into mind flayers. Let's move. Refugees, adventurers, no one in years and suddenly we're overwhelmed. Well met, and thank you for beating back those goblins. Most brave of you. Is there anything you need? Act fast if you do. The ritual will be complete before too long. I know it's drastic, but more monsters seem to terrorize this region every day. We druids will be safe. As for those that took refuge here, well, may Sylvanus guard them as they continue their travels. You sound just like Korga. <laughs> but it had to come to this. I pray to Sylvanus each night. The Wildfather will protect those refugees. I hope. Just some bits and bobs I no longer need. Pels, we can't just leave. They're kin. I'll not gamble our lives, our futures, on people who are as good as dead. We must leave for Baldur's Gate at once. Can we all just take a moment, please? What's the point in blades and spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay. These people aren't fighters. We can help! Or yell louder. That's fine too. Thank you. It's the right thing to do and you know it. She's right, Roland. We're better than this. Zerg. Fine, I'll stay too. Lest you both end up with your throat slit by Goblin Blade. Thank you, Roland. We should have left by now. Damnation! Instead, we're just sitting here, practically begging to be attacked. Staying is a mistake. And what about us? There's every chance we've doomed ourselves by helping these people. We will end up fodder for some goblin's blade, all because Leah insists on helping every wounded foe we see. Our best chance to make it to Baldur's Gate is on our own. This place is lost. Please, I can handle myself. It's others that are the issue. 
You are looking at Laroican's newest apprentice. Yes, that Laroican. The greatest wizard in Baldur's Gate. I've heard that name before. A young man, yes? Lives in Ramazes Tower in the upper city. The very same. Word in Waterdeep has it he's a bit of a cad. But you say he's an accomplished wizard? Of course he is. The greatest spellcaster along the Sword Coast. As if I'd settle for a lesser mentor. In that case, I'd very much appreciate it if you could arrange an introduction, should we reach the city. Merely planning ahead. Besides, never hurts to befriend a wizard. In that case, it is I you should befriend. Few can match me. In either magic or talent. In years to come, you will boast of this meeting, I can assure you. May we meet again in Baldur's Gate, my friend. Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. Hey, hey, keep focus. See how I used your own force against you? Ugh. I can't do it. Of course you can. It just takes time. I didn't become the Blade of Frontiers overnight. The man's smile bends downward, and his thoughts become yours. An unknown face commands your mind. Rust-red skin, gnarled horns. I'll be damned to the hells. You are on the ship. Keep at it, kid. A demon? Sounds like that brain bug's really wormed its way in. We've both got parasites tickling our grey matter. And I've been having the strangest dreams. I haven't turned into a mind flayer just yet. But sooner or later, my luck will run out. Been thinking I need a healer. And I reckon you've been thinking the same. I've been waiting for this druid Halsin to return. They say he's pretty powerful. He could probably help us. Problem is, the goblins have nabbed him. We better go find him before we start growing talons and tentacles. Excellent idea, but I have a condition. Look at these kids. They've no chance on the road, not while goblins infest it. I've got the grandest of plans. You and me, we kill the goblin horde's leaders. That should scatter the buggers. Frontier justice, I call that. What say you? I love your spirit, but you're full up. But when the time comes, just holler. The Blade of Frontiers will come calling. Splendid plan. Let's chat there. I saw you at the gates. You fight well. A few words for the kids. Spare a story or two. Thanks. I prefer when they smile. Step. Harry. Strike. Damn it! It's just not landing. Well, I'm in no position to turn down help. We need to be ready for a fight. But I'm useless with a sword. Any questions, 
Uh, like this, you mean? Step, step, strike! Yes! You really know what you're doing! Uh, found this by the road. Bet you'll put it to good use. Hopefully, it's just the goblins we have to worry about. The druids are treating us like vermin. But I'll keep at it. Thank you. Oh, yes. I'll bite my tongue when the time comes. You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way! She didn't kill your brother, Arca. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tiefling. If you ever had it to begin with. I'm not afraid. Chosen by the Absolute, I am. I'm blessed. Oh, I'll bless you, all right. Here it comes, you little beast. I didn't take these refugees for killers. Maybe I've misjudged them. They're still going to die, but at least they're willing to fight. Back any beast into a corner, and you'll quickly see its teeth. And we'll have a dog, right? They don't allow them in Baldur's Gate. Cats, though. A little orange cat. And a house with a little door so that it can come and go as it pleases. And a high fence to keep eavesdroppers out. No bother. We're just daydreaming, anyhow. What about you? Big plans for when you get to the city? God, that sounds like heaven. Won't be long now. One more trip, then we can really rest. You! Saw you fighting those slimy bastards. Fancy a bowl? Best to fill your belly now, while we still can. Food. You want it or not? Look, it ain't much, but it might make all the difference. The only way we'll make it to Baldur's Gate is to run, and run hard. If a knoll catches your scent, you'll need every bit of strength. Trust me. Ah, if it isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh, there isn't a bit of colour in those cheeks, Pettle. Are you harsh? Cold? Feverish? Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. Oh, nothing as fancy as that. But I come from a long line of women with a... Dab hand at such things. Aha! You take a sup of that and you'll feel right as rain, sweetie. Oh, it is just a healing potion, nothing fancy. Here. You just look like you might need a pick me up. I'm sorry to go on about it, but are you all right? You're looking awful peaky. Oh, I've seen it all. I once had a fella who'd been caught dabbling with a dryad. The wife was none too pleased and introduced him to a pot of boiling oil. But worry not, I fixed him up and, depending on the lighting, <laughs> he looks good as new. My point is, whatever ails you, I promise I've seen worse. What is it, Petal? What's wrong? As you wish, Petal. Now, do you need anything? I have a few odds and ends for sale. Hey, bother. Let my daughter go right now! 
She's a thief, Hellspawn. And you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back! Oh, let me through, Mragrasham, or I'll rip your damn throat out! <laughs> Magrin, give him a chance. You, get back! Keep back! Force my hand and I'll show you its claws. A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You! Apparently Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. Girl? You mean parasite? She eats our food. Drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Korga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. Leave it. Remember why we're here. Good. Play nice until we get what we need. Remand the thief. I will not say it again. No. The tiefling remains until the rite is complete. Now, Wrath. No. <laughs> Gone. By the gods, Korga, what have you done? Atheist! Tila to me! Bury the remains. Continue the rite. And the parents? They're just outside. This outsider will take word once I've spoken to him. We must focus on the rite. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? She made her choice. I know your kind. You see only victims and villains. A viper bears her fangs defending her brood. I call her mother. You call her monster. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate, the metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Zevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. Mercy on us, Sylvanus. Mercy. 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 
By every star, by every vein, on every leaf, she must. This has only happened because our true leader was taken from us. Master Holson, perhaps Goblin Court, perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Corga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damn ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. Would you? I would give anything to see Holson return home. Sylvanas's blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Holson is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. I see you. Just give me a moment. This medicatrix. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? You found her, but I still don't know what she can do for you. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. Crawled in? Some sort of bug? Or... Wait, did it look like a tadpole? But from your worst nightmare? All slime, teeth and tentacles? I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. We need to be quick. This way. On in. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. No. That was Master Halson. A pity you got me instead of him. He spent days studying the Drow's tadpole. Maybe he found an easier way. Still? Give me your arm, please. A cure. Now your arm, please. You don't have time for games. You came to me for help. Do you want it or not? No. I can't let you leave. You could transform any second. This is the last time I'll ask. Please. To hell's with it. I... I'm sorry, but I can't let you go. If you transform out there, you'll kill everyone in the grove. Everyone for leagues around. You... You're right. I'm no use to the others dead. Master Halson did say the Drow's tadpole was dormant. Maybe yours is too. All right, but on one condition. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. 
swear it. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here, I know you're not changing yet, and I've no idea why not. But we have to assume it's only a matter of time. You must understand, you are in grave danger. You have to find Master Hals. He might be your only chance. Master Halson's a renowned healer. He studied the Drow's Tadpole for days and concluded he needed to find the source of the infection to understand its nature. We can only hope he succeeded in his mission. Otherwise, that vile's your only option. Oh no. He would have slipped me navel to nape if Master Halson hadn't put him down. The drow was leading a gang of goblins. Not a common pairing. They attacked us. We had to defend ourselves. It's only after we saw the tadpole crawling out of his head that Master Halson realized how serious things were. Remember what I said. Remember your oath. Nicely done. She actually believed you'd take the poison. <laughs> Of course not, darling. The goblins will probably kill us long before that. And with that merry song in our hearts, let's go find this Halson fellow. Unless you have news of Arabella, I don't want to hear it. Wait, what? What are you saying? No. Don't be ridiculous. What are you on about? Look, it's not true. Look! Please. Is Arabella all right? No. Look! Look! I've already heard Arabella. Nine summers old. And now she'll never see another. Because of druid law. Every natural law demands I take up my sword, storm their lair, and... But no. That's what Korga wants. To prove we are exactly what she says. A threat. I won't give her the satisfaction. I'll get my people clear of this. But on our terms. You saw what they did to Arabella for trying. A child. It's Corga's influence. Without her twisting things, I believe the druids might see sense. A thought I might have dismissed before Arabella. But the druids would slaughter us. We'd have to get close to Corga, within striking distance. I can't manage that. But they've already let you pass once. If the issue is coin, I'll ensure you're well rewarded. But if you believe Korga deserves your compassion after what she's done, there's nothing more to discuss. If it ain't the fearless goblin slayer, you sure you want to be seen with me? I ain't exactly popular with this lot. Half my crew are full of holes. Now I'm gonna take the blame for leading the goblins here and losing track of the bloody druid. They chased us, all the way from the ruins we were poking around in. Aye, his name's Halsin. And if he's still alive, he'll be cursing the day he laid eyes on me. We've got a contract to track down some relic, and he wanted in on the job. Eyes lit up when he heard about it. Didn't work out, though. Goblins got him when we were turning tail. He's either digging latrines or boiling in a cook pot by now. Job's all yours, if you got a death wish. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay gobloads for a relic, supposedly buried round these parts. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. 
It's called the Night Song. It's supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you the map and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own todger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. It'll show you where we turn back. If you feel like dying. <laughs> Don't thank me. I'll be well on my way to Boulder's Gate when you die. This seems as good a place as any to make camp. Finally, some good fortune. Come morning, we know what to do. The sooner we find the Druid house in, the better. I can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? A firm answer. I'd do the same. We'll need that kind of thinking to make it through all this. You're doing well. It's a beautiful night. I think I'll stay up to enjoy it while I still can. Rest well. You're staring at me again. What do you want? Oh, what's to tell? I'm a magistrate back in the city. It's all rather tedious. And clearly the tadpole. If we can't understand it, we'll never control it. Salutations. Living legend in the flesh. Slayer of spectres, killer of kobolds. The pride of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> mm. If you'd heard the stories, you'd hardly doubt me. The proof is in the pumpkin. As I'm sure someone once said, if you don't know me as a hero already, then I'll have to prove myself one. There's an old saying I just made up. To fell a dragon, you must chop off its head. These goblins are organized. It's no hamhead pulling the strings. Their hideout can't be far. We slither in and off their leaders. Quick as crickets. Yeah, I've tangled with the like before. Thick as planks. Keep smashing and they'll splinter. Now, now, I always save the best stories for my closest friends and my cruelest enemies. Get to be one of those and I'll spill the whole jug. Hmm? You get that, right? Spill the whole jug? <laughs> huh. I guess I'll toss that one in the heap. I'm all ears. I reckon I could mutter and mope about till the brain bug takes me. But the truth is, I feel fine. Better than fine. And I've no plans to stop fighting the good fight. Go ahead. I'm listening. Let's see. I hail from Waterdeep, the city of splendors. I'm a wizard of considerable and scholar of exceptional accomplishment. I have a cat, a library, and a weakness for a good glass of wine. And if the mood takes me, I'm known to try my hand at poetry. There. Didn't that paint enough of a picture? Try as you might to breach his inner thoughts, Gale swats your efforts away with infuriating ease. I have a very disciplined mind. Those tricks won't work on me. Please don't try that again unless I invite you to.
Zoru was right. Yellow is a toad and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. You again. Get rid of them. Your words flow to her, though you never speak them aloud. I know what grows inside you, and I know of a cure. We can't trust her. Think of what her kin did. Best if we just kill her right now. He's right. Let's go. We need to check out that blast. Enough uh. gawking. Get me down. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. Lies. Just get rid of her. It is many things. A hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Githyanki protocol is clear. When infected with a geek tadpole, we must report to a caretaker for purification. You may as well suggest a wyvern bow to worms. The cure I offer will suffice as thanks. You are full up. Dismiss your weakest warrior. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows, marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. An oil bear. Please, do you have any... Shut up, Andrik. Do you serve the Absolute? Wait. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenner. New recruits. Yours to Shepard. Protect them. He... is a true soul. Mind him. He will... He... He... Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're... You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother. He was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. What? Are you... are you testing us? A true soul, like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. You speak with her voice. Your words are her command. She grants you the power to enforce her will. And when the time comes, the true souls, you, will rule. That fellow had a tadpole in his head and they consider him blessed? Chosen? What madness is this? We know that all too well, sir, but the Absolute sent us here. We're looking for fugitives, survivors from that ship that crashed farther west of here. We don't know what they look like, but anyone who survived that crash is bound to be injured. That's enough to get us started. The Absolute wants them found. At any cost.
I don't know any druids. What? And... and just... leave Ed? I suppose... I suppose he'd want us to go on. Find a way to honor his sacrifice. May the Absolute guide us. They spoke of the Absolute. Same as that goblin, Sazer. Curious. Sounds like trouble. The man is dead. But something shifts beneath his features. A glistening tadpole emerges, slithering up past a sightless eyeball. The same as the creature behind your eye. One squeeze should do it, but you stop short. How could you think of harming something so beautiful, so pure? Tadpole plops to the ground. Now is your chance to stomp it into the dirt. But it's too precious, too sweet, isn't it? You raise your heel and crush the parasite into the ground. Intense regret washes over you, churning your stomach. You're both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone! But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we... Stop! Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Well, uh, in that case, come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese, no? Nobody's getting any damn cheese! Now move it! Thank you, Gibblebock. Everything all right out there? Yeah? And who are you? Probably your trap that did him in. Come through that door and you're getting a knife in the guts.
Armed scribes. No sign of a struggle. I wonder what was so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. just woke up down here let them come the darkness can be to our advantage Ugh. from the dead just to protect some dusty baubles, fools. Their trinkets may be worth a few coins all the same. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? An arbiter of certain matters. But that is not important now. Wilt thou answer my question? So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? I am curious by what standards thou shalt judge. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Great talent or not, no druid can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Give no credence to such fantasy. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. To all questions, the Kalir Library harbors answers. A gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Not books, but slates. Wisdom so profound it is etched into stone. Truth as perfect as the queen who decreed it. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. I expect I am your first. Chuk. I suppose I am as alien to you as you are to me. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Better is an opinion, but mine is certainly more economical. Disciplined. Dignified.
I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist and a mind flayer is born. Words forged in steel. May your actions express the same metal. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Something the matter? We've been through quite a lot, with likely more to come. Care to narrow it down a little? Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. I'm not too hopeful that a gith crash will actually prove our salvation, but worth keeping in mind. We go our separate ways, of course. What else? The ties that bind would be well and truly severed. If you must know, Baldur's Gate. And before you ask, no. I'm not telling you what I'm doing there, or who I'm meeting, or anything else. You pry too much. Any further and you'll regret it. Understand? And what's there to think about? Just a group of desperate people at each other's throats. Hardly a unique occurrence these days. Besides, the one person who might be able to help us isn't even in the grove. We should look for Halsin, not waste time poking about his abode. So that's to say you'd like to pry a little. You do seem like the type, I must say. Just an observation, no offense taken. See, we're learning something about each other already. For instance, you're a quick to anger type, aren't you? Even less self control than brains. Oh, I think you'll find that I am. Knowing what makes people tick is a skill of mine. If you want something from a person, you need to know when and where to squeeze. Don't get too ahead of yourself. I'm just having a little fun. But who's to say? I might need a distraction some evening. These campsites do get cold. I suppose. I also suppose I'll have to rely on myself to stave off boredom. Was there something else? I was watching you at the Grove Gate. You spilled enough goblin blood to fill the Chiontha. Where'd you learn moves like that? That much is apparent. Perhaps we might compare notes. Brush up on the basics. The Blade's not often keen on sharing his glory. But if he has to, better it be with a champ like you. Was a time I didn't amount to much. But then, uh, a higher purpose called to me. Killed a few goblins, freed a few captives, and I was hooked. The only life I want is a hero's. Now, let's get some rest. I do my best goblin killing at sunup. You don't sleep well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. 
Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong. Or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like. I swear. I... I wasn't going to hurt you. I... I just needed... well... blood. There, in dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire. A slave to sanguine hunger. I've never killed anyone. Well, not the food. I feed on animals, boars, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. But it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so... weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. <laughs> At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. No. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these... worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine, and everything can go back to normal. Really? I... <laughs> of course. Not one drop more. He holds you carefully, delicately, until he strikes. It's like a shard of ice into your neck, a quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> oh, of course. That... that was... amazing. My mind is finally clear. I feel strong. I feel... happy. <sighs> Shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. You watch as he stalks towards the forest. Stronger, more confident, ready to hunt. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. Good morning. How do you feel? It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. A bite from them and you might wake up as a vampire spawn, like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. Oh no, I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or... Something wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Some of the rules, at least. Running water still burns like acid, and I don't know if I need an invitation to enter a house. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. That's my theory, but who knows? I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. A vampire among us. So be it. 
But should I wake with so much as a drop of blood on my neck, I will end him. Fine. As long as he keeps his fangs off our necks. He's not wrong. We're bound together, no matter what comes. I just better not wake with any holes in my neck. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. Get over there! Surround him like! You've spotted us. Good. It's like they say. No fun in skewing a pig what doesn't know he's cooked. That's supposed to be a threat. Got a set on you, all right. Almost makes me like you. Almost. I'm gonna enjoy pulling off your skin when we're done. Yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the Absolute. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Unless you bear the mark, of course. Food? Food? Food. Dollar. for me, Roach. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> I know you ain't seeing much out of that eye pebble of yours. And there's an army of us and just a couple of you. So you ain't the one gonna be asking questions. Your parasite burns in concert with Will's. 
paralyzing rage and a hunger for answers. Stand with me, mate. Carve him up, but keep him breathing. I've got some questions to ask, and I'll burn the answers from his shite-stained throat. <laughs> Look at that! The captain grew some bollocks! Damn it all to the hells. I wanted to knock him out, not kill him. He could lead me to Spike. Spike's the goblin that ripped my eye out, and I've got reason to think he's holed up in their camp. I'll fill in the rest later. Now, let's get that gnome down before he bursts a vein. Dark secrets. Vengeful urges. Don't leave me in suspense just as you threaten to become interesting. You want the full measure of the blade? Take me to Spike. All will be laid bare. Cut me loose! Baga Kabara, those pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Nothing? You're teasing me now. I'm certain of it. Take my pack, if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I'm heading to his home in the Underdark to discover what happened. I always help my friends. On that note, <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Shadowheart's attention is fixed on a damaged old statue. We... we should keep moving. Nothing. The trick of the light. But something tells me there might be a solution to some of our problems hiding in this wilderness. Let's just call it intuition. We should keep going. If I spot anything, I'll let you know. There's signs there was a conflict around here, some time ago, and different to what we've seen so far. Conflict needs opposing sides. Whoever they were, they must have had resources. A little investigating could turn up something of interest. Let's go. It's nothing. Even if it was something, I'm clearly not going to tell you, am I? Let's go.
My, my, what manner of place is this? A patch of ground to call home. Some rest for the wicked, after all. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Charmed, I'm sure, in more ways than one. We should have a chat, you and I, but not here. No, this encampment is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There, middle of somewhere. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Well, far be it from me to disappoint. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Hollering hells. You're a Cambion. <laughs> and so much more. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. A mere trifle. How dear is one's soul, really? A rhetorical question, of course, but let me venture an answer. It's worth very little with a tadpole in your head. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. By all means, bite the hand that feeds you, while you still have teeth. All those pretty little symptoms Sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Bloody hells. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one, too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him?
No doubts at all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. I know people who work much like our new acquaintance does. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt is sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. I respect his craft. As should you. Watch out for that devil. This devil, Raphael, flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. I will sit astride one. It is only a matter of time. I will ride a red dragon. I will wield the silver sword, and I will conquer every layer of hell should my queen command it. The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase. To penetrate the hells, this is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Vlakith's sight pierces the many planes. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. I'm not about to trade a vampiric master for an infernal one. He's playing with us. Cazador liked to toy with people too. Let them think there was hope right until the end. Until he snatched it all away. Creatures like them don't play games unless they know they can win. Maybe. But he's not the only one spinning a web for us. This is no ordinary Mind Flayer parasite. Who tampered with it and why? What do they have planned for us? And why are we important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door? If we find those answers, we might have a chance. The devil with the silver tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? That's because you still have hope, but when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Do you feel as flattered as I do? A cambion came courting us. Believe me, that was a devil's equivalent of serenades and roses. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. Our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil deals advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. Raphael is a cambion, which makes him part human, and what is human is fallible. By figuring out his true intentions,
fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. What if the tadpole is what he really wants instead of the customary price that is our souls? If I'm right, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. We meet again, as predicted. I shall be here in thy camp, for whenever thou hast need of my services. A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Indeed, farewell. Where are you? He of the unsleeping eyes. Grant me the might to carry this burden. Grant me the faith to face darkness without fear. A massacre. Drow and goblins slaughtered the lot. Please, just leave me be. Keep pushing! The Duke could be inside! On count of three! One, two! Yeva, what in the hell's happened? Goblins happened, Will. Now make yourself useful. Push, damn it! Push! I'm afraid proper thanks must wait. Fresh air. At last. Your boldness is a blessing. I'm in your debt. Counselor, are you all right? It takes more than mere fire to break me, Eva. Now listen close, Fist. Duty calls. Drow have taken Grand Duke Alder Ravenguard westward if my eyes and ears can be believed. Gauntlet, report to the manor and send for reinforcements. We must find the Duke. On your command, Counselor. The rest of you, count the dead. Take word of their sacrifice to this city. And you, I must ask again for your aid. Please, rescue Ravenguard from his drow captors. The Council will reward you for your effort. May I trust you'll see it through? I know Ravenguard. The heart of a dragon. Then you've much in common with him, Blade. For the Duke's sake, I hope you'll lend me your talents. The invisible force holding Baldur's Gate together. Without him, the city's collapse is certain. I fear that may have been the intention of those who abducted him. Isn't it clear? You travel with the blade. Who might I trust, if not a legend? I see your goodwill has limits. Far be it from me to stretch them. Should you hear word of Ravenguard, seek me out. I will not fly far. Fist, to work. Counselor, you mustn't trust this so-called blade of frontiers. He'll talk himself up, weave a nice tale. 
but I know the truth. And truth is, he's no hero. I said to work. That's Yeva for you. Always had to insist on the last word. The gauntlet never did have much use for me. Can't say I blame her. My father had connections. Got me assigned to a fist outfit. Wasn't much of a fighter back then. Just a thorn in their backsides. It wasn't a good fit. <laughs> Ancient history, I assure you. The gauntlet can hold a grudge longer than the Chionta. I won't be holding that against Duke Ravenguard. The blade's been called to action. There's no turning back now. The beast reeks of brimstone and offal. Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You watch with cold realization. This isn't the end of one life, but the start of another. Knolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids, can spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. You land a swift strike against her skull. She yelps, then goes still. As the light fades from her eyes, the knoll within her dies too, stillborn. If we don't deal with them gnolls, none of us are getting out of here alive. Aye, that we can do. The fire won't hold them forever, though. Be quick about it. When the fighting starts, we'll be right alongside you. The gods, that's over. 
Wish you'd been with us when the beasts attacked on the road. Might have been more survivors. I don't suppose you saw any of my crew alive out there. Damn it. I guess that's a no. Risen Road's more dangerous than ever. You're the first friendly face we've seen since Eltergard. We're bound for Baldur's Gate. Got some cargo to deliver. But we've a stop to make along the way. Joaquin's Rest. It's just up the road. I'd be enjoying a mug of ale right now if those beasts hadn't jumped us. Listen, you look like you know how to handle yourself. You should meet my associates. We've got our own drinking spot by the tavern. Invitation only. Tell the fellow on the door. Little serpent, long shadow. He'll take good care of you. Aye, the whole reason we're in this mess. Trinkets for some rich tosser in Baldur's Gate. He gets his shiny baubles. We get a handful of Tarenths. Tarenths are the currency of the Zentarim, a network of merchants and mercenaries with few scruples. You know who we are. Very clever. And you probably also know it's not smart to interfere with Zent business. This is the point when a clever lad like you accepts my gratitude and walks away. You spot a man crouching between the shelves, just as he spots you. <sighs> Bugger! He freezes, waiting on your next word. Orbs. I thought you were flaming fist. Well, down you go then. They'll be on us soon. So if you're looking to trade, you'd best be quick. Entrance is hidden behind the wardrobe. Here's the key. Here That's far enough. You revealed our location. That tongue gets any looser, Rugen. I'll cut it out. Come down, then. Seems you're a friend of the family. I owe you one for saving my people. The Zentarim look out for their own. Even if it's Rugen. That's worth some coin. And my thanks. Our trader can show you some of our more exotic items now. But don't delay. This place is likely to be rubble soon. Someone kidnapped a duke, right on our bloody doorstep. The Flaming Fist will need someone to blame. I don't plan on it being us. That drink I promised will have to wait. We're moving out. The Elf Song's my local. Look me up if you're in the city. Well, don't you cut a fine figure. Want your portrait done? If you have the gold, my pet artist will make you a most heroical likeness. Let's say we're his patrons, yeah? Found him wandering the wilds alone. He needs protection. And if his paintings cover our costs, so much the better, eh? Are you looking to buy him? I'm open to offers, mate. Threats, not so much. Mate, all right. No need to get arsy about it. Say the money, bastard. If he means that much to you. That is crap would sell anyway. I can't say I've ever been bought before. How much did I fetch? No, don't tell me. There's nothing so depressing as learning one's true value. 
Well, you should at least know what you've paid for. I am the Oscar Feveras, at your service. An affliction for which you cannot be faulted, this far from civilization. But my patron will be most grateful for your heroics, uh, my betrothed, I should say. Assuming Lady Janeth still wishes to marry me after our little, um, falling out. You recall a recent scandal, a patriarch of Baldur's Gate who wished to marry a commoner. I did not run away. A date was never set. There were... complications. B before my fame, my patron, there was a... Uh, another woman. One I planned to spend my life with. But when Lady Janeth offered me a future, well... It felt only right to mention my past. Right, but unwise. I was forced to retreat into the countryside, to paint and to clear my head, to choose, I suppose. Hmm? Oh, absolutely none. Uh, fame and wealth suit me very well, no doubt. And yet, I think of that first love, and I hesitate. <laughs> Likely I'm going mad. Regardless, we have more immediate concerns. Your reward once I've returned to the city, for one. Say, you... I don't suppose you could spare some coin, could you? Ease the discomforts of the road some? Right you are. Just asking for a little help, was all. Until Baldur's Gate, then. Yes? Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. Free and a true vampire, capable of creating my own coven. Yes. Although, I'd settle for just killing the bastard. I wouldn't be a true vampire, but I'd be free of him. Take one. Dragon's Breath Brandy. <laughs> Puts hair on your bones. Sorry about all that. Back at the windmill, I mean. I lost my head. You ever felt so much hate? It poisoned your blood. Then you've known the sickness that spreads through me. I crossed paths with Spike a few years back. He had torched the whole village, left it to burn. I wasn't a blade then, just a kid, really. Should have known better than to run hollering after a goblin bruiser on a rage high. Hmm. You better take another sip of that brandy. Down the hatch. Spike went right for the eye. Last thing I saw was the dagger coming at me, woke in a puddle of piss and blood. <laughs> I reckon he thought I was dead. I wasn't dead. From anger and sorrow, I was reborn. I was the Blade of Frontiers. I will see Spike dead. I will see the land cleansed, and I will keep its people safe.
death to all goblins. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Look it, Claw. Sapper's here. Unless you've got another reason to be here. Feck shite. Let's try to be diplomatic, shall we? Goblins don't come by the handfuls, but by the dozens. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Good for you, mate. Now get out of my sight before my wall grips you a new hole. She's a little overexcited. It's been a busy day. The lads are celebrating. Heh. <laughs> Depends who you are. We're celebrating a raid. No better time in camp than this. Get yourself a bit of fun before it dries up. Rip the guts out of Joaquin's rest, we did. Inns are good for gutting. Lads even captured some Duke. Worth celebrating, that is. Sounds like they've captured themselves a bar. Not done. Fill the front row. <laughs> With fragulous crown and with scepter abraid, draw Ragslin, short work of the innkeeper made. Yeah. The inn burnt to ash, the captives were many, goblet kind had reduced them to cowering filfenny. So raise it, your goblets, and drain them with pride. Draw Ragslin, the true soul, had led you collide. <laughs> Come on, you turnip! Huh, quite so. Now, if you'll excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, draw Ragslin! Uh, draw Ragslin! Um, uh, uh, um, uh, I am a uh, draw Ragslin! Um, um, Tumptuous! Uh, uh, draw Ragslin! Uh, um. Bah! You broke him! Wait! Wait! Uh, draw Ragslin! We pray! We. Uh... Come on, pigeon! Back to your cage! Now, look what you've done. Amid all this grandeur sunk into squalor, I wonder what dismal corner we'll find Halcyon in. A hearty serving of druid stew wouldn't do us any good. No. Let's hope for the best and keep this in mind. Prisoners are treated the same by everyone. We serve as serfs, or they waste away in a dungeon. If he's still alive, it stands to reason we'll find Halcyn in either one of these less than appealing conditions. Well, more than appealing conditions, come to think of it, when one considers the stew alternative. Guys, this 
Wilson's giving us a toast. You raise your glass and shout. Complaining. Now get out of my way. I need another drink. Must have been those strangers. You poisoned us. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. It's my pussycat, the Blade of Frontiers. You come for a rematch? Can't wait to add the remaining eye to my collection. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the woman. I know you took her. Where is she? Where is Mizora? You ain't met the Blade's friend. The pussycat sure knows how to pick her. Smells funny when you burn her. Screams real good, too. Tell you what, pussycat. Make this rat squeal, and I'll take you right to her. You want me to... to torture him? Forget it! Then forget your precious lady, mate, and slink out of here! Sniffing pussycat, cause she's long gone. But I'll tell you who took her. Ain't like your catcher. Gone with the drow. They got big plans for her. The gods be damned. I will rip you to shreds. Out. There's no reason for this. Somewhere underneath the temple, it's hidden in a secret vault. But Brian had instructions, but the goblins got him. They, 
They, they said they'd eat him. Please, please. These shackles. I... I don't want to die. Thank you. Thank you so much. The lock clicks and open. Thank you. I, I, I better go before they catch us. I should be able to make it to the grove on my own. They need to know they're in danger. It, uh, it plays music or something. I don't know. The boss didn't say. He just said some wizard called Laroakan would reward us if we found it. That's all. Don't go bothering my pigeon. He's mine. Keep him safe. Listen to him coo. Till I get hungry or some such. What's it to ya? As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. More than you've got, mate. I likes it. Pigeon's worth more than that. Time's a Bagolian. Oh, I could buy twelve pigeons with that much. Here's the key. Pigeons all yours. Saved. I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. Volothamp Gedar, realm renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. Once I've written you into one of my books, there won't be a tavern in Feru you can enter without receiving a hero's welcome. We mustn't tarry, but I hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Why, by design, my friend. How better to learn the ways of a people than to live among them? I dare say the experiment has proven most fruitful, too. I'd be happy to share my findings once we've found somewhere safe to parley. An invisibility potion, my friend. A bit less refined than your mendacious method, but by God, it'll do the trick. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! Greetings, child. I've met few aside from goblins here. You recognize the Scourge. This man is a follower of Leviathan, goddess of pain. Ah, are you also here to assist with the prisoner? Please. The things they do to that man. So crude and Primitive. I was invited to teach them. I live for pain and its intricacies, you see. But, alas... Pain without purpose is a terrible thing. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> 
I realize this looks strange, but I assure you, it is a most intimate form of worship. You see, pain is a loving thing, but trying to explain it to these goblins has proven. Forgive me, but that look in your eyes, something terrible has happened to you. Do not be ashamed, child. What I see in your eyes, in your soul, is only natural. We've all suffered in these dark times. It is little wonder you bear scars of pain and anguish. Please, let me alleviate this pain. As the Maiden of Pain, the Goddess Loviata teaches us, through penance, administered by my skilled hand. My work can grant peace and serenity, the likes of which few experience. It will be worth it, I promise. Your hide, your choice. Not quite my cup of tea, though. Is that a promise? Oh, a pity, though. You would have known such sweet relief at my hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should return to my own worship. That the jingle of coin I hear? You've timed it well, my friend. Already turned quite the profit today, so I'm feeling generous. You recognize the crest she bears, the winged serpent of the Zentrim. Half right, sharp eyes. A Zen is a normal trader, just a matter of what's for sale. Weapons and other exotic goods, true enough. But most of all, we offer discretion. No judgment, no right and wrong, just good deals and bad. That a problem for you? Bit quieter, if you please. This crowd just burned that into the ground, you might recall. But good. That means Zaris and her little operation weren't found. Seems you're a friend of the family. That warrants a discount. A small one. Keep your hands steady, three. Again! Again! Make it squeal again. We're juicing it up. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wargs. We made it squeal. Look, look, you'll see. Give me that rock. I'll show you.
Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but... Goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Yes, but just Halson will suffice. Unbecoming to demand honorifics from the one who saved my hide. Indeed? Well, not the most opportune moment, but given the lengths you went to, I assume there's some urgency. Come on then, what's the problem? Unless you'd rather wait for an audience of goblins. See, it's spreading then. You suffer from the very same blight I came here to investigate. I thought all the afflicted worked together. Clearly I was wrong. No visible signs of seromorphosis. Just like the others. The good news is, you have time. The bad news, I don't know how much. I will do my best to help you, but before that, there's work to do. Blood to spill. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the drow Minthara, the hobgoblin draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. Or more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. I found Spike. And for nothing. Mizura, where are you? Answer me, damn it! Your minds connect, and you see the same devilish face you'd seen when you first met Will. Look, you want answers, but it's not the time or the place. We'll talk in camp when I'm ready, and I'll tell you what you want to know. The twilight is darker than expected. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Your hands shake as they reach upward. Your forehead remains drenched, no matter how much you wipe. Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly. Your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. Lazel's fear grips you, not fear of death, but fear of insignificance. The great warrior Lazel, a failure to her kind. She will wield no silver sword, ride no red dragon, forever unknown to the great Lich Queen Vlacketh. I will not 
let the Geich take me. I will earn Vlacketh's honor. I will wait. But know this. I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. I know you've got questions, but let me ask you one first. You ever want something so bad, you'd stop at nothing to get it? Then I reckon you'll understand. I told you how Spike torched the village and yanked out my eye. I vowed to the hells and the heavens that I'd make him pay. But that wasn't the whole story. A woman rose from the town's ashes. My soul shivered as soon as her lips touched my ears. She promised I'd have my revenge. Mizora would forge me into a hero. I'd have the power to slay my every enemy, save their every victim. All in exchange for my endless devotion. She only revealed her true form after I'd said yes. A Cambion. Half human, half devil. She gave me a new eye. A sending stone to connect us. For calling on me whenever she so wished. Raphael. Mizora. The Devil's Game has but one end. My soul is now hers. In this life and beyond. And so I was, at first anyway. Until I put her new powers to use. I called forth the flames and fury of the Nine Hells themselves. I could conjure fire and command beasts. The more I craved, the more she promised. Bulls of fire, festering clouds. I went from spoiled brat to savior. My way of avenging every blameless life taken. Slay enough monsters, save enough villages, and there could be peace. I reckon you know the answer. There is no path to peace through the hells. Though I searched long for it. I told Mizora I wanted out. We were still arguing when the Squiddy snatched us both. After the crash, goblins plucked her from her pod and... Well, I reckon you know the rest. I don't know what the drow want with Mizora. But she promised to break our bond if I save her. I free her. And she frees me. Mizora demanded a price I was unwilling to pay. One I won't speak of. Not now. And not here. The bargain is void if she's killed, near as I can tell. A nigh impossible task, even for the blade. If the drow slayed her, they'd do me a great favor. Or so I think on the darkest days. But she still lives. They want something from her. Gods know what. Thank you. Your loyalty means more than the whole of the realm's riches. Onward then. And may we be free from the devils that might bind us. You recall Raphael's infernal smirk his goading voice. And the devils that already do. Ah, there you are. How did you enjoy my dear stew this evening? It's an old family recipe. Good. I tend to season it with spices from Karatur, but given what's available to us, good old Rosemary had to see us through. Not that I mean to regale you with my culinary exploits. There's, uh, well, there's actually something quite different. I'd like to discuss. We've been traveling together for a while now, and during those travels, I've been observing you. I want you to know that I like what I see. The way you diffuse the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. In short, I've grown to trust you. An exchange. I express my trust in you. Now I need you to place your trust 
in me. Our journey together is bound to last a while still. As such, I feel compelled to speak. I say this because there's something I desperately need. But while I'll tell you what that something is, I won't tell you why. I have to ask you to agree to this before carrying on this conversation. Thank you. I see I did well to trust you. Now, to the matter at hand. You see, I have a condition. A condition different from the tadpole, but just as deadly. The only way to appease said condition is for me to take powerful magical artifacts and absorb the weave inside. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact before we were abducted. It is time, and by that I mean it's imperative that I find and consume powerful strands of weave at the earliest possible juncture. We all have our eccentricities. Ours are just more eccentric than most. As a matter of fact, you should feel lucky to be traveling with men of taste. That's part of the why you agreed not to discuss. Wouldn't want to make an oath breaker out of you. We've already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. That one right there. Thank you. Feel the storm abating. Yes, this will keep my condition in check for a precious while. It's hard to predict the effect any given artifact has, but my condition is hardly a patient one. Rather soon I will feel it stir again, like a distant thunder sending tremors through the soul. I will need to consume another artifact before the lightning strikes. There's no choice but to find more. As luck would have it, Faerun is full of them, though I do feel obliged to point out that items of power tend to be in the hands of the powerful. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Good. A bit of boldness will serve us well. I know the allure these artifacts hold. I understand their value and their power. All this to say, I understand the sacrifice I ask of you. I hope I can count on you. Chosen, let me come to you. I can help you. I've been searching for you. You're always so far away. But I'm already here. You frown in your sleep. There must be so much on your mind. Her fingers are warm against your cheek, softer than expected. You think that you're sick, that you're dying. Are you afraid? You're so close to power. Right on the cusp. Yet still a shadow of what you will become. Come now. I'll make you feel better. Let yourself go. Lean back. So eager. Hungry. But something in your blood stirs and twists, recoiling like a wounded beast. It wants her gone. You're not ready. I will return when you are. But I do have a parting gift.
feel much better than I did yesterday. Amazing what a night's sleep can do, isn't it? Not even just that. I awoke with new... I don't know... powers. It was the same for you, wasn't it? The good health. The power. The dreams. I don't need to worm my way into your thoughts to know that. It's all over your face. So did I. What were they like? Whoever came to you in the dream? Well, I sincerely doubt you'd be moaning like that if you were dreaming about a sunny meadow or your favorite cut of pork. You had the same type of dream I had. I dreamt of someone I'm very attracted to. There was a promise of power. I had exactly the same dream when aboard the Mind Flayer ship. Don't you think that's suspicious? I'm glad we're of the same mind. If this happens again, let me know. We can't take anything for granted. Especially when it's to do with what's going on up here. My blood is cleansed. My muscles still. I have been shown new might. To tug foe and fiend into reach. Damn it all! Your gazes meet, and memories of last night's dream course through you. No. The dream. You succumb to temptation. Do you not yet understand? Your mind is not your own. First, the tadpole sickens you. Next, it entices you with a cure. If you do not see the ruse, you are already lost. Having fun telling everyone about your naughty little dreams, are you? I had the same dream, of course. Very... Hmm. Enticing. Well, look at you. Fit as a fox and twice as eager. I feel it too. Not just renewed, but improved. New talents aching for release. Ah, Good morning. And it truly is, isn't it? A very, very good morning. There's a glow about you, about everyone here. We all feel startlingly well. And yet there's a certain look in people's eyes. The far off distance of a haunting. What I saw surpassed the vivid. The voice was too true, the touch too tantalizing. I can tell you felt the same. It was an expert, this apparition. First the seduction, then the spurning, then that teasing souvenir. You're not ready. I will return when you are. That's what I was promised. We have some restless nights ahead of us. Now here's somebody special. The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. A priestess, one of the leaders, no doubt about it. Let's make her squeal. What's that? Tell your friend to keep quiet or he'll lose his good eye. Ready for the fire, are ya? Shows our devotion to the Absolute. These maggots see how strong we are with her guidance. Whole camp will be branded soon, and you should be too. You ready? Brace yourself, this'll sting. Maybe you don't need it. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. She probes your mind. Tangling your thoughts with hers. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Her faith floods into you. A tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania. Secure. Hidden. I feel you in there. Digging around. Works both ways. 
And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. With the Absolute's will, I can fix anything. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Ready to clear your head? Whatever the Absolute tells me to. Don't worry, she loves you. I can tell. Don't want a crowd of gawpers. Everybody else needs to leave. Returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. Ain't no use without the limbs. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours, a cold hand caressing your brain. A true soul? Praise be. Are you here to join my hunt? Worshippers of a false god, their existence is an insult to the Absolute's claim on this region. The thief Whimpering in our dungeon, try to flee to their sanctuary. We will continue to remove parts of him until he tells us exactly where it is. He's been resilient, but he'll talk. We can't let them find the grove. End her now. Sooner than later, if I've got a say in it. Enough. Speak only to me while you are in my presence. The hunt must begin soon. You would dare! Guards, to me! the blade. A monster like her deserves no better. Shugan al Shukok, o Tashokek Dor! I command you, corpse. Speak! Reveal truth to the Absolute! By Baldurin's bones. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Shugan al Shukok! This is the big boss. Strike him down. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue, and the bile in his soul. 
If it isn't another true soul. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. Found the squiddy near that tentacle ship. Absolute wants to know who killed it and ran off. And who better to tell us than the corpse? You choke on black smoke as the hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth, Lucan Ock. Alcohol deck, Shulko Kank! The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart seizes. Under questioning, the creature might recognize you as its killer. Raxlin's mind resists your penetration. He speaks his first question. Talk to me, freak. Who killed you? The creature responds, not in words, but memories. You see a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. Damn it! That tells me nothing! The memory fades and the corpse awaits the next question. Raxlin's thoughts roil, then still. Your words will be his. You navigate carefully. With Raxlin's voice, you ask, What were you doing in Faerun? Again, visions flow through you. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. Control panels melting, flesh pods spilled open. Gith on the hunt. They know something. Suspicion floods Raxlin's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. Why were the Gith chasing that ship? You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open, and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. What in the...? The corpse collapses, silent once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it! And nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat! <sighs> that damned trow was right! Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the drow. Minthar is the name. Tell her you'll join her in attacking that camp. Praise the Absolute. The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger. Thanks to them. Very well. My claws are yours.
did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice. But those three were too dangerous to leave alive. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. Once I've seen to some matters, then we can discuss your problem. With the leadership dead, no attack will be mounted on the Grove. I am in your debt, my friend. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. Soon. First, I must set matters to rights in the Grove. And you should celebrate your victory. After being dormant for so long, your infection is unlikely to produce new symptoms spontaneously. Tomorrow morning, we shall discuss what is to come. Rest, heal, celebrate if you wish, mourn if you must. Come morning, we shall discuss delivering you from your parasite. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. It's not enough, but it's all we have. I... We have put our lives on hold long enough. Just a little longer now, thankfully. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. My people are ready to leave when you are. Just give the word. Eldrell didn't want us, and those druids sure as hell didn't either. But you, you risked your life for us. Gods, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. Hope the neighbors are a bit more welcoming. I knew this would come right if we just stayed positive. Not that your blade didn't help, too. Back to worrying about road rations it is. So many mouths to feed, but... Well, that's not a bad problem to have. Thank you. Truly. So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. Well, to each their own. Of course. By Mordai's eyes, another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. In Kresh Kalir, a formal greeting begins with a bow. Is this monster with you? Lower. You dare interrupt? Has the tadpole ravaged your senses? Thanks. What do you want from me? On the road, to Baldur's Gate, near the mountain pass. S saw us, for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly, straight to the other side. Man, I just... I just ran. The map, show me. Yes, your mediocre interrogation technique notwithstanding. The last time a subordinate questioned my judgment, I ate tongue stew that very night. The teethling was clear. If there are Githyanki west of here, that must be our objective. 
purification cannot wait. I am unfamiliar with the, well, I shall not say culture, custom perhaps. You will educate me on matters of this fey run. The Kresh holds the Zathisk. It will cleanse us of the parasite. By covenant, I can say no more. Lizelle's eyes drift downward. Something is off. An infinitude. We are not friends. I will speak when it suits me, and not before. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place. Forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence! The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay, but consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Helsin. A dreadful misdeed. One she will never live down. But the Grove still needs her passion. You will soon see why. We will talk more of it tomorrow. You've done it. You brought Wholesome back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. Fair enough. I should not have underestimated you. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cash. Take this. You'll need it. looking knife. Why hide it here? I was certain your parasite had taken hold. I'm glad I was wrong. Thank you for saving Master Halson. For saving my home. For everything. Ha! Huh. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do when you told me about that tadpole. I don't know if I can ever restore Sylvanus's peace to this place, but I'll have the chance, thanks to you. We're ready to head to your camp. Are you? Excellent. Lead the way. As you approach the camp, you hear the sound of a celebration in full swing. I hope you'll pardon them. They meant to wait for you. But it's been some time since they've had cause to celebrate. I'm glad to see they haven't forgotten how. Will you join them? I suppose we could at that. I came out here to think, plan out our next steps. But you're right. The road will still be there in the morning. Come then. I hope you will forgive the pageantry. 
a custom we developed in Avernus. The sky there is utterly black. We took to filling it with stars of our own to think of better nights in brighter places. Nights such as this one, with a light for every life you've saved. Oh, ah, yes. Volo also wished to show his appreciation. The glimmering glow of victory's light, like stones in Shah's black skirt of night, cast shrines to which we all might pray. Our terror has been chased away. Say so you've wept and begged and fled. A viper's nest, your only bed. You dream of when your babes might say, Our terror has been chased away. A band of strangers, strange and banded, arms to arms and sword in handed, did neither trust nor peace betray. Our terror has been chased away. This band, these strangers stood and fought, and with their blood our futures bought, that we might live to see bright day. Our terror has been chased away. Our terror, yes, our pain and longing, God replaced with sweet belonging, and now a path by God's away. Our terror has been chased away. What secret in a hero's heart unlocks great valor's stellar start? A gift that gives us leave to say, our terror has been chased away. We raise our glasses, hearts and souls, our very lives to those we owe. For though they could have left the fray, their honor was not chased away. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. Share a bottle with me? We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Best not keep me waiting. I'd prefer not to entertain myself. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Niogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. A pity for us you have promised your knight to the half-elf. I've no doubt you will satisfy your tastes for endless conversation. Vlakith demands of me no less. Hmm. If only I might lay claim to my proper trophy. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted, how my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. A Starian looks particularly tempting. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here, I hate it. This is awful. Enjoy myself. There's a worm in my brain. I'm surrounded by idiots, and all I've got to drink is wine that tastes like vinegar. 
That means I have to survive tonight. And this party. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? Don't be so sour. I like a good time as much as anyone. You know, we could always make our own entertainment, darling. Get a little closer, so to speak. You are an insolent little pup, aren't you? But have it your way. I'm happy to entertain myself. There he is, the man himself. Let us raise a glass to freedom from tyranny. May we hew a clear path for the downtrodden to travel. To you, a legend in the making. And to you and Shadowheart, may your stars burn ever bright. Oh, but the blade is no myth, Chief. Myths are tall tales, fleeting as Cormirian rain. I'm as real as the heart that beats in your chest. Now go off. Have your fun. <laughs> I've got a tankard keeping me company. Thank you. I'm glad you sought me out. Amidst all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. More's the pity you've already found someone else to make merry with. Just the two of you. There's something unspeakable about Shallow Heart. But I mean that in a good way. She seems to me like a bud on the cusp of bursting into a rose. That, or deadly nightshade. Far be it from me, of course, to question your tastes. Jealousy is in the eye of the beholder, or something along those lines. The wine might be befuddling me a smidge. As they say in Waterdeep, in wine there is truth. That's usually followed by, in water there is good sense. Good sense? We'll have to wait till tomorrow. But before you go, I know there are many things about me that remain shrouded in mystery. You've been very patient with me, and I appreciate that. I was given powerful magic to consume when I needed it most. The time has come to paint you the true picture. I can only hope my tale will live up to your expectations. Tonight, of course, we celebrate. I won't keep you any longer. Tomorrow night, though, you're in for quite the bedtime story. Go on now. Don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll discuss your problem tomorrow. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? Fitting. Seeing you fight makes us, makes me feel like I'm capable of anything. That deserves to be remembered. I'm I need to dance! No. No, I need to lie down. Uh -huh. There you are. Come now, settle in. If you are to repay what you owe, then there is no time to waste. Start at the beginning. Gods, then let us add ignorance to your list of crimes. I am Volothamp Kedarm, realm-renowned author, author, and tastemaker. My next piece was meant to be an expose on the local goblins and their absolute. They're quite dead now, as you know. Turned out to provide a single meaningful quote. You stole a story from me. Courtesy demands I get yours in return. First, You'll need a name. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk, after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. A wonderful one indeed. But your deeds loom larger than life now, my friend. You simply must have a title to man. Exactly. Wrong, my friend. I urge you to leave the fact-finding to experts, hmm? Now, back to your reverence. 
I have some details of your victory to rearrange. I buried my daughter because of you! I'm going nowhere. Your daughter roused the nest. Did you expect the viper not to strike? I will bear no more accusations. Leave me. Tell me, how's the wine? The wine? What did you... Uh, uh. I want you to feel small. I want you to feel helpless, just like her. Her name was Arabella. Picture her! How scared she was. And no, this will hurt. I didn't ask you. It was never about feeling better. It was about justice. Not like I was sleeping at night anyway. Come on, Locke. We're done. Fate spins along as it should. Although thou dost not seem to be in need of my services. There are many answers to that question. None are important. Correct. No. The buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. Though you seek repose, you needn't spend the night alone. With whom will you share a bed? Your heart skips a beat. What treasures might this night bestow? You're always a pleasure to watch. Every day you become stronger. Every night you grow. But you deserve even more. Her fingers flex against her thigh, coiled with tension, longing. Let me help you. I knew you were the right choice. Let me show you what's to come. Everything you could ever desire. I trust you celebrated most heartily. Curious. I wonder if the tadpole shares in your suffering the morning after. I'm glad to hear it. You'll need fortitude for what's to come. I promise to help you with your infection. There's cause for hope, but it's... complicated. Some form of magic is arresting the Ceramorphosis process, while still granting you certain benefits. Your ability to read each other's thoughts, for instance. Magic such as this doesn't arise naturally. Someone is pulling the strings, someone of great power. If you wish to cure your infection, you must find them. These absolute wretches are rallied at Moonrise Towers, farther along the Chiontha. Whoever is behind this magic must be there. You must go there. The journey will be perilous, but 
It seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I won't be held accountable just because you're naive enough to expect easy answers. Now, allow me to continue. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. Nature speaks to me. Birds report what they've seen. And I've overheard goblins speaking of it too. Moonrise is at the heart of all this, I'm sure of it. You're half right. You have to get to Moonrise, but you still have a choice of how to get there. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or cutting through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel leading from the Temple of Saluna right down into the Underdark and beyond. The entrance is hidden somewhere in the temple ruins. Aradin and his lot thought they'd find fortune down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song, but I think there's more. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm managed to rally a whole army of Dark Justices in a secret stronghold deep in the Underdark. From there, his forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers in secret. But Ketherick was defeated before he could launch an attack from the Underdark. Ketherick took his secrets with him to the grave. You'd need a veritable underground city to conceal the force he mustered. Yet none has ever been found. If you find it, I'll wager it'll reveal a route all the way to Moonrise Towers, bypassing the worst of the Shadow Curse. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. Unfinished business. It seems our fates have aligned. You'll need to pick it up where Aradin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. The Shadow Curse. It's an affront to nature and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thorm and his Dark Justicias years ago, but I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. I spent years researching the curse, trying to put an end to it. Nothing has worked. Yet, if I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse. Same as you may find a cure for your infection. Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aradin and his band. We didn't even get close. I've chosen a successor as First Druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. I'm glad you approve. I do not truly care if you approve, but I am glad. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Indeed. We've quite the journey ahead of us. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that to Istik. This is your last chance! <laughs> Now.
No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Stop wasting time, Beretha. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to... No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. The Red Dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. The dragons serve Githyanki. I'll see it does you no harm. Follow me. We are close to the cure we seek. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding. For I am nothing if not merciful. Your name child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. A geek vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscripted with the sacred runes of our people. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. You honor me with this duty, Kithrak. I shall alert my caretaker with haste. The Kithrak nods, content with Lazel's answer. You serve your queen well, child. Take your slaves and hunt those who escaped the Gake ship. They must carry the weapon. Vlakith will see your faith rewarded in this plane and ours. To Danos! To the sky! Shkaketh! I have followed protocol. He does not speak for Vlakith. We carry the weapon he seeks. It must be powerful for a Kithrak to betray his own queen's children. He lies. I have devoted my life to my queen. I will be her chosen. It is my due. Search the bodies. We might find a way to the crash. And beware the skies. We are watched. You won't get any further this way, friend. Road's blocked up ahead. I killed the biggest, ugliest one myself. My friends inside took care of the rest. We're paladins, fighting for Tyr's justice, trying to keep the roads safe for the refugees passing through. Aye. You should talk to Anders inside. You may be able to help us. At ease, friend. The Knolls hit us hard, but this place is still safe. It's under Tyr's protection. Save your praise. The fight was a disaster. We lost two men to the Knolls, and they weren't even our target. In truth, we could use some help. Our mission is holy. We need to rest. We're paladins of Tyr, sworn to protect those in need. He sent us here to hunt a devil. Kill the fiend for us, and we'll reward you well. She has the form of a tiefling, with a single horn. But she's an infernal being, straight out of the Nine Hells. She slaughtered countless refugees. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family. 
the mother had been pregnant. She let the gnolls we fought last night, so she can't be far from here. This is the Sword of Justice, blessed by Tear. I've wielded it since I swore my oath. It's all I have, but it's yours if you bring me her head. This monster must be stopped. If you want to go poking around in the cellar, be my guest. Plug your nose first, though. Corpse, half rotted to mush. Must have been down there a ten day or more. It was a toll house. By the time we arrived, it was more like a slaughterhouse. There's more monsters than coin moving down this road. There's a locked door down the hatch. Doesn't look like anyone's managed to get in. If there's any gold left, that's where it'll be. Need any supplies? We've less mouths to feed since the gnolls jumped us. Luck had nothing to do with it. This is our calling, and Tear is watching over us. Hold up! One more step and I'll put a bolt through your eye! No sudden movements or you're dead. You looking for me? Somebody fed you a crock of shit. And you've swallowed the lot. Don't sweat it. The devils are tricky fuckers. They can't breathe without lying. Sure they were. And I'm Tiamat's left tit. I guess they told you I'd bite the heads off babies and paint myself in their blood. Truth's not quite so exciting. Come on over and I'll tell you the whole story. I'm a fugitive. Escaped from the Hells. And those bastards are trying to take me back. You're picking the wrong side here. Those bastards aren't what they claim to be. As she winces, agony shoots through you. As if your bodies shared the same wound. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The Blood War. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Stop! What was that? You were inside my head. Yeah, with distinction. Now tell me what you just did before I make sure you can never do it again. That's what I thought. There's something inside of you. I felt it. One of those God's damned worms from the ship. I didn't think anyone else had survived. Poor bastards. I boarded in Avernus. That ship was my way out. You're lucky I did. The place would have been crawling with cultists if I'd stuck around. And they'd have dragged us all back to Avernus. I was a prisoner, forced to fight in the Blood War. The eternal battle between bad and worse. Most souls in Avernus are just meat for the grinder, but not me. I held my own. More than. Turns out that I've got a knack for killing demons. <laughs> and I enjoy it. And that made me a valuable asset. Devils don't like to lose their assets. Back in the Blood War, my commander gave me what I needed to get the job done. I have fire running through my veins. I don't work for her anymore, so I'm back to relying on muscle and steel. I'll be just fine. They're not the kind of people you can run from. I need them dead. Fuck yes! 
They cornered me in the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the beating I gave them. I come with you just to see them bleed? But I'm too busy bleeding myself. I'll be here when you're done. Any sign of the tiefling fiend? You damn all of us to save her rotten soul? Curse you! Did you get the bastards? For now, but thank you. Her mind touches yours. Gratitude, warmth, and relief. Then, a light, sharper than the truest blade, brighter than a star. It fills you with awe, forcing you to your knees. And from within, a winged figure steps forward, graceful and terrible. She places her hand on your cheek and smiles as she carves her name across your chest. Kua ad vos non Petrica. Zariel, fallen lady, defiled celestial, ruler of Avernus. I was her prisoner and her champion. She tried to break me. The paladins you killed were acting on her orders. She'll send more. And worse. No, oh, I'm counting on it. I'll be ready for her. And the first step is to go home. To Baldur's Gate. I've got a score to settle. And what is it doing to me exactly? Barely felt a wriggle from it until you came along. Doesn't seem to have turned you into a mind flayer. Unless you've tucked your tentacles down your throat. I'll start worrying when it gives me reason to. I could use the company. But until I've shaken Zariel off my back, I'd only put a target on yours. My advice? Stay away from the city. When I catch up with the fuckers who did this to me, the streets will run red. Lads, for the love of all that is holy, I've never clapped eyes on your poor sister. Drop the act, hag. You was the last to see me, Rena. Just let her go. Please. Thank goodness you're here, sweetie. I, I don't know what's come over these boys. Stop this. We, we won't ask again. Careful! Don't trust a word out of her mouth. Our sister went to the Hag, and we ain't seen her since. Hand over heart, I don't know their sister. I will gladly help you all look for her, though. Enough! Where is she? Sweetie, be careful! He's with the Hag! Don't bloody stand there gaping! Get him!
Those poor boys were looking for their little sister, Marina. The girl who's staying with me. This is all my fault. But I made a promise. Marina begged me not to breathe a word if they came looking for her. And my word is my bond. That poor thing will be distraught. We can't let her know it would break her poor heart. I'd best get going, but please stop by my house. I'd like to thank you proper. I haven't spent much time with helpless old ladies. Was that normal? Probably wise. No one gets that old and crooked playing by the rules. A chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. The place has a quiet sense of calm. You can't see anything strange. I don't want a crumb left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. One more bite and this pie is gonna come back up to say hello. Don't make me get the wooden spoon. You're eating for two, so get to it. Oh, if it isn't my hero. You took ages. Come in, come in. Feel free to relax yourself and have a cuppa, hmm? Gods, grant me patience. Eat up, Marina. I won't say it again. Beautiful, isn't it? It's my little refuge for the lost and hopeless. People in dire need travel from all over Faerun to see little old me. And I do my damnedest to help them. And you, Petal, well, you need a lot of help. That wriggler swimming in your brain juice is a bit of an inconvenience, isn't it? Busy bodies are not appreciated around here. I'm inclined to agree. Let's not involve ourselves in this place any more than necessary. I'll talk about your wriggler, and that's it. Last warning. You want to play the hero so badly? Fine. Let's make this Interesting. Splitting, knife twisting, skull screaming, future. Gods, don't hurt me. Oh, please, 
please, please, please, please. Monster, monster, a mind dripping, flesh peeling, a mind flayer. No, no, mind flayer, get away, get away. You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through. Not again. Images flash. A man cowering, a bag open at his feet, gold coins spilling onto the floor. His cries for mercy are cut short as the hag slices into him removing limb by painstaking limb. She cackles, the man's remaining flesh twisted and contorted, becoming the twisted surface of the door before you. Flee, you feel it cry. A scene appears in your mind, two paladins and a cleric marching through the door shrouded in the glow of the divine. Weapons brandished, they charge into the hag's lair. Screams of terror pierce the air. The door twitches, but stays firm. You see the hag. She walks through the door, its form shimmering. The lightest touch of hope brushes your mind as the presence within retreats. You come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair. You petulant bollocks! I'll rip your spine out your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones! And then I'll bring you back and do it all over again! Just get out of here! Let's be civilized about this, eh? I have something you want. But she's worthless to you. 
Wait! Ethel can still help me! You bet that belly of yours I can. The deal is on. Let me leave with the girl, and I'll give you power. You want to be stronger, tougher, smarter, done. Anything is possible. Just let me keep the girl and her babe. It's your choice, sweetness. Fine, have it your way. I'll rip out your throat yet, you little bollocks. Nine hells. The things she did. The things she made me do. Vile. Disgusting. Good gods. You. You're the one. The mind flayer. No. The hag's gift is gone, but it's. It's going to happen. Soon. I saw you screaming, covered in your own insides as that, that thing bursts out of your skull. You change, skin ripping from your body and then you butcher everyone, everyone around you. You can't. I'm so sorry. Ah, stranger, forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. A mystical and dangerous people. We travel the land, never settling in one place. We steal your chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters. Your friend here has heard it all, I'm sure. I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. Something terrifying, no doubt. Dragon? Cyclops? Kobold? Nothing so dramatic. I'm hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I was hoping the hag of these lands could help me flush him out, but it seems she is no more. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. May your road be kind. Damn thing. It has to open, surely. It has to do something. Shadowheart's attention is consumed by a strange box that she turns over in her hands. The box is inscribed with glyphs, similar to those used by the Githyanki. In an instant, Shadowheart hides the box from view. Keep out of it. A bold statement, if not an accurate one. Leave me be. Speak quickly. So I did, and he served his use. Most enthusiastically, I might add. I may even avail myself of his talents again, should he keep his fangs off my flesh. The 
Kithrak and his Sarth could not have been far from the crash. We comb the pass and beyond until we have found it. I would also see Moonrise Towers once I am cleansed. The Tadpole's commander resides there, if my suspicions hold true. Well, hello. What can I do for you? So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me. Well, he didn't mention the slave claws at the time. And now he sends a Gur monster hunter for me. It's a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me. Concerned? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape. Turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. You don't understand. You don't know him. Just trust me when I say we need to be careful. He'll send more lackeys. He has plenty of souls to command. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. We can probably make an exception for Will. Probably. Talk to me. The blade comes from noble stock chief. Born in Baldur's Gate, bred in the upper city. And a steadfast dagger in my father's side. A different time, a different will. My sticky fingers betrayed me. Always had a ponchon for shiny things just out of reach. <laughs> Inherited it from my old man. Then I went thieving in the wrong shadows. Got myself into trouble. Father shipped me off to the Flaming Fist. Figured they'd teach me a few lessons. But I've learned a few, all right. Just not the ones he expected. The drow took Mizora, so we push forward till we find her. If we're lucky, someone can pluck out these brain bugs on the way. Lazelle's people might get it done. Gods know she sounds sure of it. Ah, good evening to you. I take it you're here to pick me up on that bedtime story you were promised. Marvellous. It's a story full of answers long overdue. It is the story of a man who fell in love with a goddess. Thank you. Once upon a time, not quite that long ago, there lived a wizard in a tower. The wizard was what one might call a prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it like a musician or a poet. Such was his skill that it earned him the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, Mistra. 
love. Perhaps it was not quite love, but you see, the wizard was but a very young man. It was most certainly love to him. Mistress showed him the secrets beneath the veils. The gossamer veils first, draped across the weave. The delicate veils next, draped across her body. Chosen one, she whispered, as she slipped them off completely. Yes, until one day, all too soon, the whispers stopped. The goddess spurned the mortal. The veils were drawn once more, and the wizard was left behind, heartbroken. He was blinded by love. Good stories are rife with lovers' follies, after all. Like so many of the heartbroken, he did something infinitely foolish. One has to think big if one seeks to win back a goddess. So the wizard thought big. In a word, yes, here goes. Once upon a time, very long ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower, a flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his story for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite, and his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic unleashed that day was phenomenal, rolling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. A fragment of it was caught and sealed away in a book. No ordinary book, mind you. A tome of gateways that contained within it a bubble of astral plane. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time, locked away from Mistra herself. What if, the silly wizard thought, what if after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The result was certainly maddening. Here, place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside, there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through you and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Of all things, magic. This netherese taint, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest and it needs to be fed. As long as it absorbs weave, it remains stable, to an extent. The moment it becomes unstable, however. Rather worse, actually. It will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. Yes, it is my truth, finally revealed. It is this folly that led Mistra to abandon me completely. I can only hope that you won't abandon me as well. After all we've been through, surely we can brave even this side by side. That is a great relief. Your apprehension is most warranted, but oh, Great relief this is indeed. It is an honor to call you a friend. Many challenges lie ahead, but in this moment I believe nothing to be insurmountable. What do you say? Should we call it a night, or do you have questions for me? I'll be honest with you. I don't know. She's my muse still, embodiment of magic. 
or the embodiment of love? Only if we ever meet again will I know. The orb was kept safe and inert in a pocket of astral planes suspended in time. If I can somehow manage to expel it from my body while in the astral plane, it will be rendered inert again. Alternatively, I could learn to control its chaotic magic. That is, to succeed where I failed before. Without Mistress' favor, I don't see how that may come to pass. Of course, there could be different answers as well. Faerun brims with more magic than any one wizard could fathom, let alone comprehend. Who knows what outlandish solutions may yet present themselves. Good night, then. And thank you. Something's wrong. I feel... I feel... What the... Darkness, protect me. No! I'm fine. Forget it. Never you mind. You're not going to let this go, are you? I worship Shah. The mistress of the night. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. Heavens forbid. We're all entitled to our secrets. True. I didn't think you'd react so pragmatically. Perhaps I should have told you sooner. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. No, I can't. I mean, I literally can't. There's certain things I can't remember right now. Shah's secrets must be preserved above all else. All who worship her know this. I have had certain memories suppressed, voluntarily, so that I can serve Shah without compromising her. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. That is not for you to know. Leave it at that. Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shah will reward me when I succeed. There's no story. None that you're entitled to hear, anyway. Forget you ever saw it. Wake up. Your face aches, like your jaw's been wrenched asunder. Your tongue is lead, skull eager to burst. Why won't you let me in? Can't you feel what's happening? You're not conscious of it, are you? Some animal part of you is thrashing about. Let me quiet the beast down. Nausea twists your stomach. But it's hunger, not revulsion. Something inside you clamors for blood, for death. And only the tear of flesh will do. It wants her. I know, but you'll keep fighting, won't you? We'll find each other, and everything will be all right. Yeah. 
as if mingling with a horde of goblins wasn't bad enough. Let's do what we have to do, then get out of here. Quite the understatement, but yes. Let's not linger in this place any more than necessary. What's that? It said they're coming, but who? Our blood to fill your oceans, O oh blessed Poal! Our bones to build your temple in the deep! A wave of pure devotion washes over you, and with every surge, you feel a presence grow in response. Words, priest! Promises! Your god wants proof! Wants blood! You don't recognize the creatures, but this voice seems to have a hold over them. You! Our Lord of Murder demands sacrifice. You will be an offering for the great god Poal. When it isn't murder if you're willing, is it, Cutlet? Well, priest, Poal wants a sacrifice. Poal wants blood! above the others, brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision, your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose.
fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. I can neither mend skin nor spirit, but we still might commune. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Right. Never mind. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. Bald. Blue tunic. Dumb as a stick. Stop! Stop! People pay! These mushrooms! Toxic! Scroll! Escape! My bag, please! I've dropped it! Somewhere! Thank you, thank you. Curious, beautiful, but dangerous. Next time, more careful next time, for certain. Thank you for your help. I... I think I... Uh, uh, anyway, what do you say? Noble stalk. Yes. There it needs noble stock. Mushroom. Good stuff. A and a ledge. Yes. I was on a ledge. Crumbled to bits. And I tumbled down. Mushroom. Powerful. Dirith wants it for a brew. She's very good, my Dirith. Very good at a brew. The shop! The shop needs all we find. Bone cloaks. Baldur's Gate. Anything from... Anything sourced here. Very high rate of profit. My, um... My words get away from me. You'll have to ask Dereth. She knows the ins and outs. Look at that. Got my useless old man back. I suppose that's your doing. His hands are empty as a whole. We'll have to send him back out soon enough. Please, Balin's got a job to do. We can leave when he's done it.
Love? <laughs> Never heard of it. Balin's meek now, but he used to be a rotten old bastard. Treated me like an old shoe for 70 years. Losing his mind was the only good he ever did by me. Collecting noble stock. Valuable mushroom. We have a shop in Boulder's Gate. The locals go mad for it. Nearly nothing it can't cure. Blindness, poison, hair loss. Probably. But Balin in his right mind wasn't worth half a half of noble stock. I know him better than anyone. Got the scars to prove it. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. <laughs> or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important to learn. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No cerebral forces. That's impossible. That intrigue. Are you looking to have it extracted? free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the Grand Design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. A collective quest to eliminate the Gith and enslave all other humanoids. If that settles matters for the time being. Would you like the diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. As Omelum's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive, awake, almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. Theorize, but I suspect your transformation will be both agonizing and instantaneous. I thought it was always agonizing, Omelium. Well, yes, but that wasn't my point. No, it appears. 
is to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. <clears throat> Death. It means you would have to die first to extract the tadpole. Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. The Southwest, when I last saw her, although her tower does have a tendency to move. Travels be safe and swift. turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. It will lower the psionic defenses around the lava. If I cannot remove it, I may still be able to tell you more about its origin. Ormelum watches you with cautious intensity. It expects doubt. It expects fear. Only in that you may be a danger to your 
yourself. What the potion may make you see or feel, I cannot determine. But, unless you are already a step from death, it will not kill you. The acidic liquid tightens your throat, burning on the way down. It's a bolt of agony straight to your stomach. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. You're sinking, sinking into a starless void that has no end. The connection between mind and body draws thin and tight. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. The cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluan, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. solution, albeit a temporary one. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift. But in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? We shouldn't cause trouble, Omeluum. There are enough threats down here in the Underdark. Very well. I abhor violence, and would rather prevent it where possible. Yeah, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. A pretty thing. And at least it offers us some protection from the tadpole. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. Fleshwalker, come, talker. Far you've come. Reach into memory. Tell me of home. It 
shivers in response to the deathly tomb and reveals its own home, a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Dweda destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. I do not belong here. I am not welcomed here. The sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwegar, dark dwarves, chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwegar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwegar killed their children. The Blade must avenge them. Deep purples swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear. Chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. An illusion comes over you. A Dwegar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. I can spare you no warrior. Too many were lost. But accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glow. Riches of magic and mind. Cleanse the rot and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. It replies with an echoing screech and returns its gaze to the corpse. Unusual spores waft from the decaying flesh. So, Francer, sovereign spore has sung your fate. You will cleanse the Dwegar rot. I will join you. In death, the foe becomes your ally. I will raise it. You may command it. I and I am the cure. They erased my people. I will erase this. Remain in the Underdark, and I will follow. We cleanse the rot together. Looks like you let that rot flower get in your head. My axe will fix that for you in no time. Arrow. 
mortis. Fronte no la fides. you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony, serenity? I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. Follow the one we call Brew. Promised treasure awaits you. Years of terror. For what? That Draukal might have bits of magic lingering inside it. Something for Gale. A vessel wobbles on the lake's murky waters.
Gentlemen, what are you doing on Gek's raft? Where's Gek? Who are you? As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. As you cross the dark water, you remember your capture and infection, your harrowing escape from hell, and the constant threat of becoming a mind flayer yourself. Your search for a healer brought you to a druid's grove and the refugees sheltering there. You remember their gratitude when you stood by them. A hag promised she could extract the parasite inside you. But you didn't take her dark deal. One evening, a devil came courting, insisting that a cure was impossible. He said he'd come again soon enough. It hasn't been all bad, though. You fondly remember your night with Shadowheart. Your reverie is interrupted by an underground fortress appearing in front of you. The symbol of the Absolute is clear, even in the dark. You need answers. What game are the Mind Flayers playing? Is there even a cure? What are they doing at Moonrise Towers? And why are they looking for you? Amid this flurry of questions, you feel something else deep inside you. A hunger. A lust for blood. Soon. All right, so... I want you to clean up all of this, okay? Gargoyle with a good curse over there. Explosive, explosive, and then uh, over the... Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the end of the early access content. We are still under development behind me here, so you can't go through. But congratulations, very well done on getting here. And in the name of everybody at Larian Studios, I would like to thank you for supporting us in early access. Now, uh, we take community feedback very seriously, so I would like to invite you to go to our community forums or go to the review pages on the store where you bought the game and let us know what you thought of your experience so that we can learn from it and use it to improve hey, the game. Hey, let your let's get going. All right, so I gotta go back together with this man here, continue to develop the game, but See you soon, because we'll have much more content for you right. as we continue to integrate feedback and support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to sing the song, right? Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's do it. Row, row, row your boat gently down the lake. Merkel and Bob.